Why are so many people stuck on thinking that the old way of doing things was the only way that required true skill? When I was working in aerospace, a lot of the old aircraft drawings from the 1960s through the 1980s made me crazy. They were hand drawn and usually had parts on top of parts on top of parts. Some drawings were so overcrowded that you couldn't even see the shape of the parts you were trying to machine unless you studied those drawings for hours. Then, if you modeled the complete assembly from the drawing, nothing fit together right and you'd find out that people on the assembly line had been hand trimming the parts to fit for over 50 years. There's no doubt that the guys making these drawings by hand 50 years ago were incredibly skilled. But does that mean that we should still be doing things this way today? Of course not. Today, design engineers regularly create 3D models and drawings of assemblies where every single part fits together flawlessly. And if they don't, it's the exception and not the rule. And while they don't use pencils and slide rules anymore, the end product is far better. Technology has improved the process exponentially to the point where a complex drawing takes a tenth of the time that it used to. I've seen several comments on our videos from people saying things like, It doesn't require any skill to be a CNC programmer or machinist. All you guys do is push buttons in the software and machines do all the work for you. Or, I'm not impressed. Try doing that on a 60-year-old manual lathe. Well, the people that say things like this lack any real understanding of how today's software and machines work. They're basically saying that rubbing sticks together to make fire requires real skill, and if you use a lighter, it's because you lack talent. You think that if you went back in time and gave early man a lighter, they'd keep using flint and sticks? No, because with modern technology, they could focus their attention on solving other problems or being productive elsewhere. I was reading through the comments of a video that Chris did recently on how a temp guy came into their grinding shop and blew everyone away by being 300% more efficient than the 30 year old time standards the company had been using. A few people were all up in arms in the comments saying things like, how dare you not respect the old timers? Well, I would ask, how dare you keep running the same way you did in 1982 and expect to get any respect at all from people that can do your job three times faster than you? You mean to tell me that over the course of 40 years, technology in your field has not advanced at all? And the responses to that question were almost always, well, they don't pay me enough to hurry. Or if I go faster, I might mess something up. It reminds me of a guy I worked with 20 years ago that always bragged about how low his scrap rate was, but his productivity was like 90% lower than any other employee. Our entire society is built on improving upon the ideas of our fathers and grandfathers. And while some skills are lost along the way, others are gained. Today, more emphasis is put into software skills than in turning handles and knobs. You'd be hard pressed to come up with any machining process that would be faster on a manual machine than it would be in a modern CNC with modern software. Now that's not to say that manual machining doesn't require a lot of skill or still have a place in manufacturing. It obviously does. But to say that CNC machinists and programmers are any less skilled would be incredibly incorrect. In fact, the majority of the basic skills are all still there. Having the ability to look at a print and in your head build an entire process to make the part, from machine selection, the raw material size, the fixtures required, the tooling, the feeds and speeds, the order of operations. We still need to know what knobs and buttons on the machine serve each individual function, and we still need perfect setups on our tables. And then come the computer skills, for creating the 3D models of the parts and fixtures, deciding what toolpaths to use and setting the hundreds if not thousands of variables to make the toolpath efficient, creating setup documentation that's easy to understand and thorough, and sometimes other things like code verification and control plans. Now if you threw me in front of a bridge port and asked me to machine an engine block from a solid billet, could I do it? Probably not. But put me in front of a 5-axis mill with a seat of SolidWorks and a seat of Mastercam and I'll run circles around that bridge port every day. People in manufacturing need to stop being immediately offended when someone comes along that has a better way of doing something. If you're afraid that the new guy is going to take your job, then maybe you should take a close look in the mirror and ask yourself if that's exactly what you deserve. Have you become lazy and complacent and satisfied with the consistent results of mediocrity? Or do you regularly adapt to the constantly changing methods and tools that become available and challenge the methods that you thought couldn't possibly be any faster? If you're willing to adapt, then you're a part of the future and not a relic of the past. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys again soon.